Hello, beautiful people. If you need some GP without any delays, here's some money-making methods that will help you pay for all your high-tier gear for big booty bossing. Or if you're prepping for necromancy, it will help you with crossing off those expensive bones that you don't want to buy. So why don't you check out these strategies and give it a try? I mean, who doesn't love a good bone, if you get what I'm saying? That's right, we're going to farm them, and they're not for praying, so sit back, relax, and let Let's get to slaying. So the price of bones is currently just too dang high. If you didn't have any bones stocked up before they officially told us about necromancy, you might be up a creek without a paddle. Is that how that goes? I don't know, I think I'm making stuff up. <laughs> I mean, nothing new. What I'm trying to say is you might need bones and you probably don't want to buy them, and honestly, same. Or you might want to profit off of this. Either way, let's get it on this bone action. <laughs> now when you go farm bones, I recommend bringing a spring cleaner, the upgraded bone crusher, and have the death note relic active. The upgraded bone crusher will allow you to automatically pick up bones that aren't set to be crushed, and yeah, make sure to check your settings before you start farming bones so that way you aren't crushing your money. If you activate the death note relic from archaeology, bones are going to be automatically noted when they're dropped. Noted bones picked up automatically? <laughs> Life doesn't get any better. Okay, that's an exaggeration, but it is pretty sweet. And the spring cleaner is just generally good to bring with you when you're farming mobs. Now let's go ahead and talk about those bones. First, we have reinforced dragon bones. You can get a small amount of these from ED3 if you are lucky, but most of these bad boys come from rune dragons. To fight rune dragons, you'll need to complete the Fate of the Gods quest, which gives you access to the world gate. So this is a quest legend method of making money, but surely you've done all of your quests. Uh, so you can get to the world gate quickly with the sixth age circuit or the Kethsi ring, but these are not required and you can just walk. Get those steps in, you know? Take the scenic route. Stop and smell the terror birds. <laughs> Make sure you have super anti-fire, range armor, and a weapon. Jazz Dragonbane arrows are amazing here. You can also bring a Dwarven Siege Engine if you want to try to spicy AFK it. And of course, because these are metal dragons, the Kethsi Ring is going to give you 4% damage boost, and that's pretty juicy. Reinforced Dragon Bones are a hot commodity, trading for over 80,000 GP each. That's right. 80, comma, zero, zero, zero. This is straight money, and you have a shot at getting a Visage or a Steadfast Gale, which is just going to add to this already amazing moneymaker. Next, we've got my personal favorite moneymaker on this list. It's just too good to not take advantage of. If you're not working on your Dagonoth King's Log right now, you are missing out. There is no time like the present. That's right, we're farming Dagonoth bones, among other things. Sometimes you want more than just the bone, you know? <laughs> So you're going to want to bring hybrid gear, and these are low-level bosses, so you don't need amazing gear if you don't already have a sick hybrid setup. You can bring War Priest to Sliske and anything in between. Bring a weapon for each style, preferably 2H, so you can save some inventory space. You can use anything really, but obviously better weapon, faster kills, you know. The effects of the Inquisitor Staff and Terrasar Maul do work against the Kings if that's something you're into. So yeah, listen, the bones aren't worth a whole bunch, right? Right now they're currently worth 7,000 each, give or take, which is nothing to sneeze at, especially because you can get multiple noted bone drops between 7 and 11, which really do pump up the number of bones you get per session substantially and the GP you get. And here's the best part, the bones are not the only thing that will make you money. You have a really good chance at getting some rang drops from the Kangs, and that bling bling will let me tell you about these things. The Archer's Ring, Berserker's Ring, and Seer's Rings are worth some serious GP considering the difficulty level of the bosses that they come from. For example, Seer's Rings are 16 million each right now. I did an hour of Dagonoth Kings the other day and got two Seer's Rings, so right there, I already made bank. Throw in the bones and D hatchets on top of that? Why aren't you already down under Waterbirth Island AFKing your way to riches? Moving down the list, we have Hardened Dragon Bones. These are currently selling for 35,000 GP each, so they are definitely worth farming. 
Where do they come from? Where do you go? <laughs> do you see what I did there? They come from adamant and gemstone dragons. For adamant dragons, you'll need to have done the hero's welcome quest to use the dragon can lair or have access to the Brimhaven dungeon to get to the adamant dragon dungeon. Like all dragons, you'll want to bring some super anti-fire. Because they're metal dragons, the Keth C ring does increase damage here by 4%. And yeah, I mean, that's it. I like to bring magic because they are weak to air spells, but you can kill them with anything really as long as you have a positive attitude. Maybe you get some visages in the process and pad that cash stack. Who knows? So the second source of hardened dragon bones are the gemstone dragons. You can find these bad boys in the gemstone cavern and you're going to have to have Karamja gloves three. You will also have to give Kelhar uncut gems in order to kill the dragons whenever you want and you can start to 60,000 kills at a time. So just give them a bunch of dragon stones or a few onyx and get to dragon slaying. If you have a slayer task, you don't need to pay the man. I would say it's best to bring range here for easy kills. You can just hit them a few times and they basically die, so grab your super anti-fire and get to hitting. They do have a special attack where they shoot a line of rocks on the ground at you and that opens up into a big rock square that hits you with magic. If you are in melee range, they are not going to use this special attack. There are also secondary effects of this attack. Dragonstone dragons will drain your anti-fire time left, onyx dragons will take your life points, and hydrix dragons will take your adrenaline and reduce your adrenaline gain. So uh, just move out of the way if you see the special attack coming. Keep your eyes on the ground. <laughs> okay, now let's talk about a classic real quick. Frost dragon bones have always been a really great source of GP, and I'm pretty sure it's a crime to make a bone farming list and not include them. Right now, they are selling for about 28,000 GP each, so I mean, do I really need to say more? Grab some super anti-fire, head down to the Ice Frost Dragon Dungeon Resource Dungeon, <laughs> and have a field day, assuming you have 85 Dungeoneering, of course, which you definitely do because you're a skilling legend. You can get there quickly with the fairy ring code AIQ, and if you don't have the Dungeoneering cape, you can, again, run there from Port Serum Lodestone. Way too easy. You can literally kill them with anything. There's not much to it. Just go make that shmoney. And finally, the last bone on our list is the air root bone. These bones are currently selling for about 24,000 GP, which again is not bad. It's a lot lower than other bones on the list, but air roots are easy to kill and can be safe spotted. So this is a good option if you have 92 Slayer, which I'm sure you do have because you're a Slayer legend, of course. You can access them easily by using Fairy Ring AKQ or just run from the Eagle's Peak Lodestone. Air roots are going to hit you with melee and range, and they do have a super angry spicy hit attack that they do. You can stop the attack from happening if you stun them before the attack hits, which you know is coming when you see the air root hitting its chest. I wonder why air roots are so angry. <laughs> you can kill them on Mozkov, but I personally prefer the ones near Piscatoris because there are rocks around them that you can hide behind if you just want to be cozy while you kill innocent air roots for their bones. <laughs> And that's it, we are less than a month away from necromancy and the prices of bones should be high for the foreseeable future, so get out there and get farming. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. Like, subscribe, share, and most importantly, be kind to one another. See you next time, friends!